We are awakening together. This is our weekly gathering we hold online. For more information, visit our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you there. Okay, good morning, everybody. Happy October 25th. It's amazing, isn't it, Dawn? It's just completely flown by. I know where to go, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, we are here for our weekly gathering. And um, what we do here first is we say hello to one another on the, uh, on the chat board, just as you would greet uh, everyone in a brick and mortar church and reach over that pew. We're going to reach over the virtual pew here and say good morning. And while we do that, Don will play our opening song. So go ahead, if you will, please, Don. All right. Thank you. Morning, morning. Uh, <laughs> let me see what I'm supposed to be doing here. I am supposed to tell you all about our statement of purpose. Um, we are an assembly of equals joined in common purpose, awakening to one true self within an appearance of many faiths, many cultures, and many symbols. We seek to discern one truth and to rest in its embrace. I will also share with you uh, <laughs> the core value that is, is uh, most pertinent to this morning's talk. And I, I, I chuckle there because it seems like I've been working on the same core value now for, <laughs> for quite some time. Um, it's core value number three. We accept one true self which is one presence or being, non-dual, without beginning or end, and absolutely changeless. We live this value by practicing letting go of the belief in the individual self as who we are. Yay! <laughs> Sweet song. Um, yeah, so... Um, we'll, um, we'll take a moment here for... Uh, for prayer, and um, I'll invite Inner Wisdom to lead this gathering. Uh, we are all one love, and we're all here for one purpose, awakening to one true self. So, Father, let me appreciate the intention of this gathering. Let me say what you would have me say. Let us all hear what we should hear. And lead us to a deep understanding of our oneness. Amen. Okay. Um. Now, uh, Connie's going to read for us this morning. Thank you, Connie. Uh, she's going to read uh, uh, from NTI Matthew chapter 20. But before she does that, I, I, uh, I want to read uh, from, uh, you know, there's one of these little Bible icons, and I think it's helpful to, uh, uh, here in NTI, and I think it's helpful to uh, understand the story that's being discussed here. And since I didn't ask Connie ahead of time to read, the, the passage from the Bible, I've, uh, I've printed it out and then I will read it and then I will turn this over to Connie. So again, this is Matthew 20, um, verses 1 through 16, and I'm reading from the New International Version. This is the parable of the workers in the vineyard. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. 
So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each, of, each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work in the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. All right, Connie. The first will be last and the last will be first because there is only one. Confusion comes in seeing many and seeing separateness and therefore seeing different contributions and some who are deserving of more than others. If you see only one in this story within the scripture, that one is all the same and that one deserves the same reward for agreeing to come and work. This is what I would have you learn. There are not many, there is only one. And that one that you think is many is the son of God, created by the father as one. And so he is one. Do not focus on differences. Let them fade from your sight. Do not think you deserve more or less than your brother or that you have more or less than your brother. You are the same, deserving of yourself and one with your father in heaven. There could be nothing else you need no differences, no difference between you. The differences that you believe are differences in the world. But I have already told you that the world is temporal and matters not. It is the eternal that is the truth. And I have also already asked you to let go of the world. And so you must let go of differences you see in the world. The Spirit of God is one. There are no differences. Be willing to let go of them. The truth is always true. And this you will see when you lay aside your belief in differences. It is your belief in differences that blind you to the light of life. Be willing to let go of your belief in differences that you may see the life that is me. Specialness is a form of difference. One whom you see as special, you see as different. And so you ask for more or less for this person within the desire of your heart. Beware of your feelings of specialness. For any feeling that will separate your brothers within your heart will split you off from the kingdom of heaven. Love your brothers as one with my love. In this way, you will know truth. In this way, you will know heaven. In this way, you will know life. To separate your brothers and have expectations of them is not to see them as one. They are one together. They are one 
with you. They are one with God. Whatever you expect of your brother, you expect of me. If you expect that he is separate from you, you expect that I am separate from you too. And this is, and because of this, you are lost from heaven. I say, love your brother. Serve him as you would serve me. And as you do, you serve yourself. For you have acknowledged that it is all the same and that for its sameness, you are grateful. You will go far on your gratitude for sameness. I say to you, gratitude for sameness will carry you to heaven. The truth is always true. It is just that you do not see it now. And because you are blind, you cannot see it of your own power. So do not try to see that there are no differences by exercising your will. For it is your will that there be differences. The one who has will to see differences will see what he has will to see. Instead, be willing to lay down your will and ask me to give you sight. As you make room for my will, you will be given my will. And through my will, you shall see. Thank you, Connie. Um, oops. Turn that off. <laughs> Stop. All right. Um, so... I began having an experience of oneness that led me to um, choose this as my topic for, um, for today's homily. Um, and the experience um, that I began having was the, an experience of oneness. Um, and so I, I <laughs> so I, I began to look for um, the causes of that experience because that's not how I've experienced the world for I don't know how long am I fifty eight <laughs> for fifty eight years, um, uh, and it is an experience that has been uh, given me through grace. Um, I really have begun to see that we are all one and and <laughs> and when I say see it's not um, it's an understanding of the heart and not of the mind um, I uh, I recently watched the movie my octopus teacher uh, if you guys haven't seen that movie I, I highly recommend it um, And I think that's the theme of the movie. I don't know. That's the one I saw. <laughs> um, just, just this connectedness. And uh, at a, at a, like I say, at a visceral level, um, uh, and it, it's about the relationship of a scuba diver guy and, and an octopus that he meets in the ocean. And he goes back every day for 365 days to uh, be with this, um, with this octopus. Uh, and it, and it, you know, it sounds a little bizarre, but it's like this interconnectedness is not just with um, these other seeming human beings, right? It's with everything, with every molecule that's on this planet. And, and when my heart is sharing with me the uh, interconnectedness of things, uh, I, I have the felt sense that it extends uh, to everything and between everything and among everything. Um, 
you know, it, do, it doesn't feel like it starts here. It feels like something that I am maybe to, able to tap into. Um, At the same time, I began to um, look at the idea of peace. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Martin talked about uh, 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 awakening being uh, a fun fundamental sense of well being. Uh, and uh, it seems to me that that's another way of um, describing the peace that passes understanding. Um, I began thinking about peace in terms of uh, non-duality. I thought about uh, talking to you guys uh, today with the title, Peace is Non-Duality. <laughs> because if oneness is really understood, Really, if oneness is really understood, the result is naturally peace and harmony and well-being. If there's only one thing going on here, if there's only one of us here, if there's not many of us here, you know, there's no, there's no one to reject or be rejected. There's no one to attack or be attacked. There's no victor, there's no victim. If we truly understand that there is only one, we understand there is no us in them, no observed or observer. There's only relationship with self, among self, being with beingness, isness with isness, oneness with oneness. And while this sounds like, you know, something that we've talked about on many occasions, uh, we really have to ask ourselves, is that the experience we're having? I can tell you that this is not an experience you can have in the head. <laughs> it's just not. It's a um, matter of dropping from the head to the heart. Um, and this I, I believe is what is meant at the end of this passage where inner wisdom says, do not try to see that there are no differences by exercising your own will. The will of the individual self, the thinking mind. Uh, because it's the thinking mind that leads us to see us and them. Those who are more deserving and those who are less deserving. When we open our hearts, all of those distinctions and differences disappear. Opening our hearts might be experienced as compassion or empathy. But most fundamentally, it is awareness of no differences. Um, you know, I, I like to watch movies and I found myself, uh, as, I, as I came into this experience of oneness, 
watching movies that I'd seen before. I watched On Golden Pond and I watched uh, Spanglish and I watched um, Meet Joe Black, <laughs> uh, which of course is a movie based on uh, Death Takes a Holiday. And in this, I'm trying to find a word to describe it, posture, this open-hearted posture, the connections between the characters and the movies and the themes in the movies It was all me. It was all the process of living life. It was the joy of living life. You know, I told Sean, it, it was like, it's like, you know, eating a peach and having the juice of the peach just run down your face and your arms. And I mean, it's, it's, this is life. This is life. It's the, it's the fullness of life. The flow of life, the burgeoning energy of life, the the constant renewal of life. Even even in death, there's uh, such promise, such pro such promise, such renewal. It's um, unending. It's a constant flow. It's what we are. In the movie Meet Joe Black, if y'all haven't seen that one, it's an old, old one uh, with uh, Brad Pitt when he was a baby. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's really sweet at the end of the movie. Uh, he has come to take somebody to death. And at, at the end of the movie, the guy's the guy he's come to take has 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 brought himself you know, to the realization that this is what's going to happen, you know, that it's time to go. Uh, but uh, uh, death has been hanging around in somebody else's body, taking a holiday from being death and, and, and partaking of life. And uh, at the end of the movie, the guy that he came to get is like, well, come on, you know, it's time to go. And, and, and death is standing there and just mesmerized by what's going on in the scene and, and has gotten so involved in life that he finds it difficult to go. And, and that's what the, uh, uh, that's one of the, the, the guy who he's come to take says to him, he says, it's really hard to leave, isn't it? You know, even death doesn't want to leave life. Uh, and it's just, this is what's here for us every day. This is what's offered to us. in the recognition of the oneness of life. It's such a feast, it's such a festival. And I believe that it's hard to describe that experience in words. And the way to appreciate it is to invite yourself, to allow your heart to invite you to have this direct experience of oneness yourself. The heart is always making that invitation. What we need to do is accept the invitation. So the question becomes, okay, that's great. You've, you've shared your experience, Jacqueline, that's wonderful. But how do we do that? And I think that uh, Matthew is a good start on uh, learning to do that. Matthew chapter 20. So let's look again at what, um, what the recommendations are in uh, Matthew chapter 20. First of all, uh, Matthew chapter 20 points out that our confusion, 
First of all, let me ask you guys, who, who doesn't hear that story from the Bible and go, well, wait a minute, those other guys worked all day long. Surely they deserve more. I mean, that's the way, the, right? <laughs> that's what we do. Some are more deserving. They've put in more effort, right? And, and, um, and others less so. And the point of the story is, if, if you see many, that's the way it will appear. But there's not many. There's only one. There's only that flow of life going on here. There are not discrete individuals who have worked harder, who deserve more, who deserve less. I, I remember, um, and you all have probably heard me mention it several times, I remember Regina uh, talking about uh, when she and Laurent took some dispute they were having to Holy Spirit, and they wanted to know, you know, how to get past this, and boy, they both sure seemed right, uh, and Holy Spirit said, you have got to quit seeing each other as persons. So the confusion comes when we see each other as persons. Uh, it says here, the confusion comes in seeing many, in seeing separateness, and therefore seeing different contributions, and some who are more deserving than others. So if you start from that, if you start from that uh, posture, from that paradigm, of course, there's going to see some seem like some are more deserving, some are less. In T.I. Matthew chapter 20 says, if you see only one, you'll understand that that one is all the same. This is what I would have you learn. There are not many. There is only one. So uh, the first recommendation here is do not focus on differences. Do not think that you deserve more or less than your brother or that you have more or less than your brother. You are the same, deserving of yourself with a capital S. You know, uh, when I read the announcements, I told you about the upcoming uh, Releasing the I Am Bad Belief retreat. And the root of the I am bad belief is I don't deserve awakening. I don't deserve, you know, maybe Regina can do it. Maybe Muji, maybe Adyashanti, but not me. Not me. I haven't worked hard enough. I haven't sacrificed enough. Um, there was that one time when I did that one thing to that one person that I hope never, nobody ever finds out about. None of that's true. None of it's true. It's what we believe, but it's none of it's true. Um, so we're invited to contemplate the unreality of that, the fact that that's not reality. Really, think about that. Does the fact that you did that one thing that one time really mean that you're undeserving of knowing the self? Come on. Is that how God gives? That has to be something that the mind made up. That's not how God gives. So, in practical terms, when you see you're making those comparisons, when you see that you think you deserve more because, on it, you worked harder than that other person, or you've been at this longer. My goodness, I've been at Awakening for 25 years. What do you mean this brat that just came up last week, you know, has some knowledge that I don't have, right? I mean, that's, I've been there. I have had those thoughts, right? Look for that. 
you and and I, and I want you to look for it because you because I I feel fairly certain that you guys have had those thoughts too. That those thoughts come up in your mind. And that's the time to say not true, only belief. What we're often tempted to do when we see those thoughts in the mind is go, oh, no, 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 I'm, I don't believe that. And, and that's not contemplating the truth of what we are. That's not contemplating uh, our ability to let go of, of, of that belief. That's denial. That's repression. That's not helpful. So invite yourself to see when you're making those types of comparisons, when you're looking at your own acts and the acts of other people to determine your worth or your worthiness of coming to know the self. None of it's true. None of it's true. There is only one and we all deserve the same knowledge of self. Um, in uh, NTI Matthew chapter 20, it says the difference that you believe in are differences of the world, but I've already told you the world is temporal and matters not. I've already asked you to let go of the world. So understand that, that when you're making these types of comparisons, that you are focused on the world and what seems to be valuable in the world. And remember, not true, only belief. Moreover, Matthew 20 says, it's your belief in differences that blinds you to the light of life. So this is what's at stake. I mean, you can like deny it or repress it or just let it go by without being addressed. But making these differences and these comparisons and who deserves what and what I deserve related to what the other person deserves, that is what blinds you to the recognition of oneness. So catch them, catch them and catch those thoughts and be grateful that you saw them because these are the very things that blind you to the truth of your being. Matthew chapter 20 also talks about specialness. And frankly, I had a hard time with this paragraph. Um, I'm going to read it. Specialness is a form of difference. One whom you see as special, you see as different. And so you ask for more or less for this person within the desire of your heart. Beware of your feelings of specialness. For any feeling that will separate your brothers within your heart will split you off from the kingdom of heaven. So I believe that this is also an invitation for us to look at how we treat people differently. You know, those that are in our inner circle, those that are in our families, opposed to those guys out there. Just be aware. Just be aware of the different treatment you would give. And once again, be aware that these ways of thinking are what keeps you from experiencing the truth of your heart, that what keeps you from experiencing the truth of life. Just be aware of it. When you see it, just be aware of it. I think this is a difficult one for, uh, for me and, and possibly for you guys, because it's like, well, wait a minute. I really do love her more than I love everybody else, right? <laughs> Just be aware of it. 
You're not asking, um, I don't think we're being asked to do anything different here. We're being asked to, when we see, we're being asked to notice that when we see it. And to remember that one love is one love. Love your brothers as one with my love, as one. So just remember when you see that, there's one love. It's shared equally among all, all seeming, <laughs> all of us. There's one love. Show me that one love. You don't need to work yourself your way through this with your mind. Drop to the heart. Show me the one love that is. The next recommendation uh, is that um, we not have expectations of our brothers. To separate your brothers and have expectations of them is not to see them as one. You know, we put people in these different roles and in that role, you should call me once a week. You know, if you're my sister, you should call me once a week. If you're my friend, you shouldn't call as often because you're bothering me because I'm busy. <laughs> right. I mean, whatever the expectations are, you should understand that I'm busy. Look for where you are placing expectations on other people. Um, and I feel to read this to you that, that, um, that I wrote with inner wisdom, it says, uh, life seen through the heart, wherein lies the one will, does not see winners and losers, victors and vanquished. The one will of the heart has compassion for all things. The one will ask nothing. The one will ask nothing, right? If there's only one thing going on here, I have the space to just appreciate what's going on here. The one will ask nothing, but immerses itself in what is. What is is a cascade of burgeoning life and unmitigated renewal. One's heart bursts with a recognition of shared humanity, shared life. Oh my, what a wonderful world. The allowance of the temporary to be that full access to life's parade. So we don't realize that through these habits, that what we're doing is we're setting up opposition. Here's, here's a standard, hope you meet it. If you don't, you're gonna be down here, you know, you're not gonna be quite worthy of the one love. If you meet it, whoo, you are special. And I'm gonna count on you to do that in the future. Yes, we don't realize that we set life up. It's a setup. It's a setup for my brothers to fail me by placing these expectations on them. Inner wisdom here in Matthew 20 says, uh, whatever you expect of your brother, you expect from me which sounds a little um, hard to dig into, but the next sentence explains it perfectly. If you expect that he is separate from you, you expect that I am separate from you too. So you can't have it both ways. There's, a, there's either recognition of the one life that we all share, the one love that we all share, that we all are, or there's a separation. And if I'm separate from you, then I'm separate from inner wisdom, from the life that is. 
So that's the encouragement to check yourself, check yourself. Am, do I have expectations of other people? And, you know, the, the, the practical way that this has shown up for me is um, not making other people wrong. And you may say, well, you know, I got that. I got that. I don't, you know, I'm nice. I don't make people wrong. <laughs> Shauna said no. <laughs> um, but I see this show up in like um, just simple, simple, simple little stuff like emails. Um, you know, you tell somebody the program is next Thursday at noon. And then they'll write to you and say, so what time's that program? And the old tendency, the separate tendency is to say, as I told you in my previous email, the thurs this program starts Thursday at noon. There's just these subtle little ways that we make other people wrong. And it seems like a baby step, but it's all of it. It's all of it. It's catching it. Am I making someone else wrong at any time? That's this expectation that's being talked about. That's the boom, the separation device, right? Just, just when they say what time's the program, say it's Thursday at noon, even if you've told them that 12 times. Catch yourself. Catching yourself is the key to freedom from the belief in separation. This is the invitation. This is the invitation of the heart. Accept the invitation. Is the heart going to say, I already told you in an email a moment ago? No, the heart's just going to say it's at noon on Thursday. We hope you can join us. Again, the, the end of that paragraph says, if you expect that he is separate from you, you expect that I am separate from you too. And because of this, you are lost from heaven. The next paragraph says, I say, love your brother, serve him as you would serve me. And as you do, you serve yourself. And the recognition here for me is that as I've done some of these exercises uh, that we've been encouraged to do, as I've looked at, for example, Ephesians and the law of love and, you know, what you give out, you're going to get back. I realize that there's still this underlying belief in separation, that there's still this giving to get. This giving for gain. But if there's only one of us, if there's only one self, to give is simply to participate in the truth of my nature. That's what I do. That's what the heart does. It extends. And it doesn't extend so that, you know, I'll just get the good stuff and none of that bad stuff that I get when I think negatively. I mean, there's still this kind of crack in the foundation there. This misplaced motive. excuse me, serve him as you would serve me. And as you do, you serve yourself. Why is that? There's only one thing going on here. Who else is there to serve here? I'm not serving so that I'll be elevated. So that boy, now I can get in heaven.
I'm serving in appreciation of the truth of my nature. And how do I know that? My heart tells me so. And when you do that, you get that, you know, eat the peach juice running down your arm. Appreciation of life, of all of it, of all of it. What seems to be the ups, the downs, the just the, that appreciation for what is. And this is the sameness that's talked about here. It says, for you have acknowledged that it is all the same and that for its sameness, you are grateful. This is the gratitude um, that's felt in the witnessing of life, in the, in the My Octopus, the Teacher movie, in the Meet Joe Black movie, in the appreciation for the isness, the beingness, the burgeoning life of life itself. Inner wisdom says you will go far on your gratitude for sameness. I say to you, gratitude for sameness will carry you to heaven. Again, it says, uh, because you're blind, you can't see it of your own power. Do not try to see there are no differences by exercising your own will, because that's, <laughs> that's what's been going on, my own will. Then tell me, no, nah, I better get mine before he gets his, or maybe if I give you something, then I get something back. That's your own will. You might recognize that as ego. That's what's being talked about here. So the recommendation is that we be willing to lay that seeming will aside. It's the willingness. It's the willingness to lay that will aside. That's what, as it says here, makes room for my will, makes room for the heart to open. And the willingness is the, is the asking. Instead, be willing to lay down your will and ask me to give you sight. So it's, it's, it's the catching of the separation thoughts. It's the catching of the thoughts that witness to our belief in separation. That's the point where you go, well, it really does seem like, you know, those guys should have got paid more money because they worked all day, right? So you see that and you go, let me see the truth of this. Let me see with your sight. Let me see through the heart. As you make room for my will, you will be given my will. And through my will, you shall see. So it's not a sometime thing. It's not a sometime thing. And we're, we're told often, <coughs> excuse me, that we should um, be grateful to see our mistakes, that we should see everything as an opportunity for healing, that we, that we should, in fact, praise our mistakes. This is what's being talked about. Just look, look with no guilt, no judgment, no need to be right, no need to be further down that spiritual path. You know, oh, I've been doing this for years. I really should have gotten that by now. Not helpful, not helpful, not helpful. Be willing to look and look with your heart. Be willing to set aside your belief in where you ought to be. Because that belief is the attempt to exercise your own will. to steal heaven. It can't be done. It cannot be done. The only thing we can do is look 
and recognize it for what it is, to recognize it as the belief in separation and, and ask to be given the sight of inner wisdom. And as a shorthand, we call that moving from the head to the heart. But be aware, be aware. Be aware of what you're lending your belief to and how it puts blinders on you. Begin to live through your heart. You can do this. We all can do this. It's who we are. How could we not do it? It's not hard. It's not difficult. It's who we are. All that's required is the practice of it. And the practice of it is not just giving lip service to it. It's not just thinking about it. It's doing, it's moving from the head to the heart every time we see the opportunity to do that. The alternative is to go, oh, I should have known better. That's more of the same. Um, imagine this, I had a lot more. <laughs> but I think I'm I think I'm out of time. I think I'm I'm done. I just want to um, say, and I and I started that out with my notes. Uh, be it to see it. <laughs> um, so we're, we're told by uh, A Course in Miracles, teach what you would learn. And, and that's how we begin to experience and appreciate our oneness. We live from here. We live from our hearts. And when we see we're up here, when we see we're up here separating, Try again. Choose again. Um, so I think we're out of time. So we'll stop. Uh, and um, what I'm going to do now is play a song for us to contemplate and uh, hopefully have a little bit of time left for you guys to share. Uh, while I play this song, Don is going to post our... Um, uh, link to donate we uh we do operate on your donations and we appreciate them greatly so i'm gonna start our song here okay guys um it's your uh, opportunity to share and we'd love to hear what you have to share well if no one else is raising their hand i'll share briefly um I'm uh, taking the Explorers course right now, which is the course that follows the Finders course. It's supposed to be for Finders. And they, uh, they have this questionnaire, which has hundreds of questions in it. And the purpose of the questionnaire is, and it's funny because Jacqueline kind of used these words, it's to check yourself and to catch yourself. Because basically what they appear to be saying, in my interpretation, is you may indeed be a Finder. Uh, you may be lying to yourself and it's even possible that you're psychologically delusional and need help. So, <laughs> so the questionnaire is to help you check yourself. But what's interesting is, and I spent all day yesterday doing this questionnaire. So it was really fresh in my mind. And what's interesting is a lot of these questions fit with exactly what you were teaching. I thought I would share a few of them. Uh, I feel worthwhile even if I am not successful in meeting certain goals that are important to me. I feel that some people have more value than others. Uh, making a big mistake may be disappointing, but it doesn't change how I feel about myself overall. I think that being good at many things makes someone a good person overall. My sense of self-worth depends a lot on how I compare with other people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are several questions which fit very, very much with that story you were sharing, right? Uh, and of course, if you are a finder, right, uh, your sense of worth is going to... In fact, one of the questions was, uh, I believe that I am worthwhile simply because I exist. 
right? Uh, so if you're a true finder, you're going you're gonna to be not comparing yourself to others. You're not going to see some people of having more value than others. Uh, work, you know, the amount of work you do has nothing to do with your worth or your worthiness to awaken. And again, you and of course, everyone else is worthwhile simply because you are, right? So since I just took this questionnaire yesterday, and again, these are just a few, there are hundreds of questions, but uh, since I just took this survey yesterday, as you were speaking today, I couldn't help but remember those questions. And again, the assignment is to check yourself, right? Look at these questions, check yourself, and then also catch yourself, right, in this wrong thinking. So uh, thank you, Jacqueline, for sharing today. It was beautiful. Thank you, Regina. Uh, uh, that's great. Uh, as you were speaking, I went, oh, the finders, not the seekers, but the finders. I mean, I, I think that's the first time I got that. <laughs> um, Graham, thank you all for the opportunity um, and to be here with you. I love you all dearly. Thank you. Thank you for watching. This was our weekly gathering that we hold online. For more information, you can visit our website at awakening-together.org or you can subscribe to our Awakening Together channel and click the bell for more notifications when we post our weekly gatherings. Thank you again for watching.